Oh, thank you. Uh, well, for me, again, it's a pleasure to talk to you and mainly to learn from you uh, in this cold weather. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there are some existen existentials, you say that? Existential uh, uh, question that I already made myself. I really want to share with you, and it can be a part of the, my research work now. The first one, are we researchers interested in inducing change in the food system? It's like a hamlet, to be or not to be? What is the question? So one is of my principal question in my life. If so, you know, to induce change, try to change your sofa in your house. And sometimes you will receive some reaction from your family. No, no, that is, oh dear, sweet honey, no, the sofa is not here, it's there. So to change a, a particular component of the food system is no easy job. It takes such a long time. Unfortunately, I have been living a very important period of, period of, my, of my life by, because of donors, because of funding. And really hard, if you really want to promote a change in, in, uh, in the food system, it's really hard to, to connect one phase with the other. And sometimes you get the momentum in one phase, and when you really want to continue in order to take advantage of this momentum, the fund it's over. So you have to renegotiate, or even when you start renegotiating a new phase before, maybe you, you take one year in order to restart all over again. It's no guarantee. Any donor give you guarantee of, about that. So how do we induce change in the food system? It's another important question that I have been making myself. And how can th this chain can be sustained? Because in certain period of time, you apply or you implement a project, and there are many cases all, all over in, in the world in which after the project finish, everything is going down again. I have several examples, like, uh, like uh, for instance, the innovation platform in Latin America. Was working perfect. After the project finished, no innovation platform. So I discovered that the innovation platform was meeting in order to get funding from SDC, Sweet Development Corporation, and all the donors. Well, in my mother's experience, I can tell you that no formula. It's really hard to find a step one, step two, step three. Hmm. However, there are some clues. It's in order to, to meet or to develop this clue into something more concrete, we submit, Julia and myself, this proposal to the European Union, and finally, after the, the first attempt, we, we get it. And what is the agrobiodiversity management enterprise? Agrobiodiversity management enterprise is focusing on adapting, experimenting, and releasing on a commercial scale plant varieties with local adaptation as well as produce some products from this variety. We are all convinced that agrobiodiversity is a big pressure in the world. And for me, it's really hard to believe that, for instance, Bolivians are able to maintain more than 2,000 varieties of potatoes, and they are importing potatoes from the Netherlands to grow in the country. For me, it's really hard to believe that Mexicans, who has a plenty diversity of maize, they have to import from the United States tons and tons of seeds for, to be planted in Mexico. So for me, it's a big paradox. I really want to understand what, what kind of alternative 
we have to to put in place in order to mitigate that. And the local economy in this concept is quite important. So let me start in Cuba. It's really my inspiration. I'm originally from there. I have been spending many, many years, more than 40 years working there, working there. So this is important inspiration for me. So this is the picture of Cuba in the 70s and 80s. It was a massive Green Revolution movement because of the, the revolution, the Fidel Castro revolution, they believed uh, that in order to feed uh, the Cuban family, the agrochemicals and conventional seed it was, was the formula to, to reach that. Cuba in that time was one of the most important, I would say the first agrochemical consumer all over Latin American countries in the 80s. But what happened in 1989? 1989 was the socialist country collapse. All the communist Eastern country collapsed and they supplied all this input to Cuba. This is the figure that we can see in 1989 what amount of inputs we received and four years later, I would say three years later, what is the amount that we had? And what's the reduction according to different important item, it items related with industrial agriculture? It's, it's easy to see that it was enormous reduction so, so my question always is, what is the price of one liter of petrol here now? 125. 20, so you can imagine next week would be 50 pound a liter. What <coughs> happened? What will happen? Mm -hmm. I, I, I can tell you. I, 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 I'm not a magical person, but I, probably I can, I can draw you the picture. No food. No transportation. So you can imagine the Brexit get you isolated from the world. And what, what's going on in Cuba? The largest, the largest state company collapsed. All big company collapsed. All this company, the economy was based on oil. So no oil, no businesses. So professionals in this critical period em uh, emigrate to United States. Yeah, sure, Cuba, United States, the, fam the famous balseros, I don't know how to say in English. The, the little boat, they challenging the sea and many of them die in this journey. journey. And they uh, emigrate to Mexico. Ecuador, Spain, and probably some of us here in the United Kingdom. So the professionals in our sector also emigrate to tourism industry in Cuba. However, in the middle of the crisis, you can see a small farmer smiling. Why? So the majority of small farmers were not include into the Green Revolution movement before the 80s. So they were able to maintain some practices as uh, saving their seeds, applying some rational way of growing sin because they were a little bit independent and because they are small and independent and private was not the mainstream of the government to consider them. In a, in a communist, a socialist government. So they were facing the crisis completely different. In practice, 
they became into the driver of the chain. Believe me, the knowledge I learned mainly from a small farmer, not from the university. The university have some idea, some alternative, but the, really the teacher of the, of the process of change were the small farmer. So, so taking account that, that the farmer were the driver of this new agriculture era in Cuba, so what for action was prom promoted by my team? The first one was the Sikh Diversity Fair. I was discussing previously, now, today, with the Organic Garden about the collection they have. So, I, for instance, this is more than 50, 60 different varieties of maize. And this is our beans, more than 45, 60, a lot of diversity of beans. I negotiate this diverse diversity with the Cuban yin bumps by like a trade-off I did. So I, I had a project from Canadians, so I can buy the seed to them. They said, it's not allowed, but they look at, you are losing the seed because they black out. They said, it's not allowed. So let me make another deal. So I bought some three, four laptops and sent to them by this collection. He said, okay, deal. We did, all right, excellent. And so many people just start to criticize my team. They say, you are crazy. How you can change this really important laptop for sample of seeds? Well, we believe in that. The second scene is like uh, any people who fall in love, performs, is uh, they bring this is a small sample to, to the farm. All the people who participate in, the, in this fair, they bring little amount of seed, and they plant it in the, in the neighborhood, in the, in the community, and of course, they are falling in love about the new discovering, and they start to invite family and all the uh, community members in order <coughs> to see the, the new love that they discover, and to replicate the same process, so you can see you can choose what really you want to bring home, but little samples of seeds I can give you back. This is the second important point. The third is the Innovation Festival. In Cuba, we're forbidden to talk about businesses. Businesses is a little bit no well seen by the government, by the mainstream, because it's a communist, a socialist country, and business, you know, who, who ideologically don't fit in the Cuban government mainstream. But the farmers are quite clever and they organize the Innovation Festival. Innovation Festival is a way that they show all this new discovery to the customer. Look at all these new things we have that we can make some deal with you. So it's, it was the space where they were able to identify the market niche for the new scene that they have been able to grow in the field. And the first thing, after uh, maybe some year, I'm reflecting, and for me now, it's, uh, it really was the most important point, is the action lending program. What is that? So, in this period where we were able to create the agrobiodiversity pollinators. What is that? It's a person, it's not a bee, but it's imitating a bee. They are able to carry the best element from one point to other, from one farmer to other. They, they, they develop by doing the capacity of pollinating or fertilizing socioeconomic changes in order to create a better food system.
how they how were they trained? The third principle of that was the participants are not the uh, are the owner of the training, no the facilitator, no teacher. This is the important thing. What can I teach them? They are the, the champion of the process. So I had to be honest. So they are the owner of the training. The second thing, the participant designed the learning curriculum. It's not any pre-designed curriculum. So, and the curriculum is the same by them on the basis of what? On the basis of the real challenge that they have, not the academic have. So the question, the research question came from there and they, they can be answered by themselves. So, in my former teaching time, I was teaching in the university, I remember that we organized the one very interesting curriculum for agronomists in Cuba. And how was organized? So we meet all the staff of the center and we decide what are the content and the method that we had to write down to be applied all over the island. And now, for me, it's a really wrong process. At least, if you really want to teach or to be part or facilitate a process, so the owner of the problem had to be the curriculum designer in order that they become into the owner of the solution. And three major capacity, we did unconsciously. It was not, I would say, pre-thinking, pre-thought. No, 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 I'm reflecting now after some year what we really did. And we realized that this capacity on intuition, it was very important in promoting this kind of, of energy to pollinate with diversity of seeds and, and different agroecological practices. The second thing is the fantasy, the creation that the people, the people have a lot of knowledge in the community. And sometimes we academic people, we believe, we, 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 we classify them, this is exotic knowledge, you know? But I think it's very important to go beyond that. It's not exotic as such. It's very important to, to, to promote the change. The change is there in their hearts, in knowing our hearts. And the courage is very important. The other two elements that I really want to add to that is the necessity and the urgency to be to do something different. It's, if you really want to promote change, you have to identify in the population that you really want to start to work with them. What are the really persons, group of persons who have the necessity to do something different for different reasons, political reasons, economical reasons, cultural reasons, anyway. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, an example about that we call the chain reaction of pollinator for inducing the chain in, in the food system. For instance, year one, we trained 30 agrobiodiversity pollinator following the principle that I mentioned before. As assignment, they had to bring on board five new uh, farmers, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, year, in year one, 150 champion farmers were, were bring on board. You can imagine a particular place that more than 10, 20 farmers in a community start to do doing something different, experimenting with new practices, with new seeds, with new organic uh, matter, um, um, different combination, this kind of trials that you know because you are scientists. So a lot of people start to be curious, curious about that. So 
different organizations have been working traditionally in this area, I start to see what, what's happened, what you are doing. It's no, 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 it's not an exhibition. It's a living process that you can be part of it. So at the end of the first year, 170 catalyzers were, in, were involved, were on board. Yeah, after one year, some little experience have been taken and this, well, why we cannot in the second batch to involve instead of five, to involve new eight farmers, each of us. So in year two, 1,370 champion farmers were involved in the process, plus so you, we said, oh my goodness, so oh, thousand farmers now, so we need to reinforce these agrobiodiversity pollinators. So we training, and we, we developed a second batch of this agrobiodiversity pollinator, yeah? And you can imagine in what particular area, thousand farmers doing something different, the curiosity is still is rising up. And people from FAO, from different agencies, start to see what's going on. You say, no, no, what's going on? No, it's, 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 open, it's an open process and you, could, you can be part of it. What can be your contribution or what? That, I'm not asking you for money. We are asking you to, 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 to do something together to overcome the challenge that we are facing. So at the end of the second year, 1,450 catalyzers were on board. It's we discuss with them and say, come on, why we cannot involve each of us, eight new persons on that? 11,600 farmers can be involved. What was the result of that? So a global diversity pollinator, well, the first thing, they, they, they behave like a beast. They start to, to disseminate all practice all around, all, all over the island. And they promoted hundreds of trials in which who made the decision instead to be the scientists were the ordinary people. So look at the diversity. Before, in tomato, we, we start with, with the people who were able to manage three varieties. After this pollinate, pollinating injection, they were able to manage more than 42 varieties of tomatoes. In May, from four to 52. Unbelievable, in beans, that is very important crop in Cuba, from five to close to 200 different varieties. In rice, from six to 45. And of course, so some cooking innovation, the way of preparing food, new varieties were able to, to be incorporated into the normal diet of, of the people. And this was a diffusion. In two, 2000, we start with 25 farmers, seven individuals from three organizations. Yeah? The crazy. The, how you call them? Um, what's the problem? The Mavericks. <laughs> Later, you can tell the, uh, the article that we wrote together and we wrote Mavericks. It was a problem for me <laughs> because it was translated into Spanish in no proper way, and the, uh, they, in Spanish, say dissidentes. And dissidents in Cuba is to be again of the government in favor of the United States. <laughs> so, so these uh, seven first mavericks, it was the, the picture of, in 2010. More than 50,000 farmers on board and 12 organizations participating. 
Well, the good thing is that there are many, many official organizations was considered like a very good practice and they apply. But the bad thing of that is how to institutionalize that. Because you know sometimes the organizations are a little bit rigid and to apply that they are not prepared, prepared for, to do that. So it was a really interesting process of change for them and still is is on. And of course social recognition is uh, if so many small farmers are making decisions like a very like a novelty in Cuba, the journalists always, oh my goodness, what's going on? I learned here from the journalists this last Saturday as well, how a small group of people were able to, to grab the attention of the journalists. It was similar here. The journalists start to, to make some interview, very interesting, interesting articles, reports about this kind of process. Oof, and the money, the money, people get a lot of money, believe me. Maybe the profit in some family increase more than four, four times in 10 years the profits, I'm talking about the profits, because they were able to, to grow more with less. And the tricky thing that you have to make in Cuba, you have to make an agreement with the government. Hello. <coughs> so so you, you have to make an agreement with the government, yeah, by, by, by law, by constitution. So you make a deal with your cooperative by saying, okay, so I can give you that, and they buy the, the product with a little, little, little price. And of course, small farmers try to, it's the, you cannot survive only selling to the government. But the interesting thing that the government never expect that the people can make triple of the yield that they had before with this game of the seed and agroecological practices. So they keep doing the same amount to the government and the rest they sent in the alternative market. The big surprise, it was that even in Cuba, like a socialist or communist country, behind every champion farmer, we discover one or more business model. I was completely unconscious about that. I started doing that with the idea of my, you know, my feeling of the, of the commons and something like that. At the end of the day, I, I realized that, the, that they made a lot of new business with diversity of seeds and agroecological practices. So the impact was extended. This approach was applied in Bolivia, Mexico, Myanmar, and I, I was really surprised because of mm, the, the break even was reached by the majority of the participants of the training program of this process in less than one year. For instance, I don't know here, but in Spain, to reach out a break even in six, seven years in small business is really successful. And there, in less than one year, and they, they have been able to spend four years protesting to the government to receive some money to grow food. And they say, I'm waiting for years of my, of my life when all the natural resources that I have, the point how to put in practice, how to add value locally to the resources that I'm managing historically. So farmer at the end, very happy, mainly female. However, Technical staff were not so happy. Why? It was a really successful process. Because the resources from international government were getting down. No money. And we were fighting each other in order to get a grant. No enough grant for everybody. 
we were navigating into the wrecked ocean. That means that we are in the wrecked ocean, the chart are trying to, to, to beat over and to, 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 to bite over. It, um, it's fighting each other in order to get something, in this case, the grant and the, the money from the little money from subsidy or from SDC, Swiss Development Corporation, something like that. So what could professional champion farmer do? I'm going to, to show you, and Quintana Roo is a Mexican case. So the heirloom seeds were collected, simply. Secondly, you see what selected? Mexico. Third, the heirloom seeds were multiplied. And now, eight tons, 80 tons have been sold in two years. And we discovered how the local seed business as a, as a business accelerator. What, what's going on in practice? For instance, this is a small farmer. This is our small farmer. They usually sell the seed in this particular community by cinco pesos per kilo in the community. They held them said. The government and the big grain producer, they buy, they get the seed for buy 120 pesos a kilo to American companies in the middle of the maize kingdom. It was created a social enterprise. This social enterprise training, train more farmer and together with them discover what are the more demanded seeds in the region. The social enterprise buy the seeds to the farmer by 20 pesos. And the social enterprise sell to the government by 80 pesos. But look at, in this particular area, the, the, the organic concept were, were completely eroded. A lot of chemicals. I mean, even the small farmer, the wardens of the diversity were applying a lot of chemicals. So it's, hey, 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 look at, it can be different. So the social enterprise is providing some technical service on how to produce organically, or at least agroecological, with some agroecological principles. And also, the big grain producer, they realize that if they cannot even afford so many chemicals they, they have to, because they're growing expenses every year, every year, every year. So also, a technical service supply was made to the big grain producer. But for me, knowing a little bit more now the experience, the most interesting thing is because they win, they are winning, they are winning, and they are winning. And it was created, led by this social enterprise, a platform, in order to keep this win-win situation. And they negotiate transparently what happened, prices, everything to do with the business. This first experience is, was an inspiration to develop other. For instance, it's a technical service provider. This is a simple farmer. All right? He's really an important person in a, in a particular community in Cuba. And she, a small holder, it, it's, it can be considered as a professional associate of a particular research and development organization. So you are part of our team. 
seems to be simple, I don't know here, but in Cuba, that you can sp spray results on behalf of certain polar organization is, is, in, is quite important. It's the difference to do something, I would say, recognize it, but if you are not this kind of, of brand, you are a, 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 an ordinary black market people. This is the difference. And she diffused the best practice in the community. The other is franchise. Well, you know better than me, you are the, the country of franchises, like United States. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know here, but in Cuba, I would say Mexico, I would say Bolivia, I would say all the countries that have been involved with them, the, the, the research and development organization, mainly public, there are plenty of very interesting findings, but on the desk. And the people have a really huge demand of that, and no connection between of, of the findings of this important finding of the scientists with the reality. So, something that they, they are trying now to implement is to graphing a license to smallholder for the particular products like biofertilizer, biopesticide, and so on and so on and so on. And they, the smallholder, can spray it to the customer. And the other, uh, probably uh, a bit more anarchic. Anarchic? 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 Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> It's an open source as such. For instance, this is a fair pool of diversity of pool of the, the of seed pool. That seed pool is selected by all the farmer and they create their own pool. And they are able to share with other and they create a critical mass and apparently a cow, but it's not as such in which everybody is changing, you know, because of a first injection of diversity in, in, uh, and new practices in a particular community. So, according to how they have been playing the, the new practices, or applying the new practices, so different particular business models can be created together with, with them. So it can be created one mo uh, business model one, business model two, three, and so on. Uh, when I'm here, I'm, I'm so I, it's a Maria Curie fellowship, uh, I would say, pretext to be here. I'm, I feel so, so happy to be here. So Maria Curie was a pretext <laughs> to work with you guys. Um, unfortunately, two years is a, short, is, is, a, is a very short period of time. So what are my, res my research questions? So I really, I'm experimenting how to play the role of pollinator in United Kingdom, Spain and Cuba. What is the principle that really to be transparent with the all market player, all the stakeholder or shareholder involved in the value food chain? What is the principle? What is the new innovation broker? I would say, I would like to say pollinator that we, we want to create in order to make more impact on the ground. And for me, another important question is uh, how the students start from research and development organization can, can strengthen this capacity of brokering innovation, how they can induce some change by doing as a part of the curriculum of them in changing reality, learning how to change reality by doing. And also, for me, it's, it's important to answer 
uh, yeah. So I came from the from Earth Research Center, and I did one in very simple question maybe 20 years ago to my colleagues in Cuba. I asked them, "Who are your colleagues?" Okay, it's easy. Who are your clients? What, who are your customers? It was really a difficult question for for even including me. I'm working for for whom? For European Union? For pharma? For car? So it's very important answer that I first, I'm working for pharma. See, if I am working for pharma, I have to rethink the way that I'm communicating and the time that I spent in publishing sims. Thank you. <laughs> so if you are, if my client are scientists, paper is, is fine. Because it's the community that I have to reach out. If I really want to change the food system, what can be my priority? I only have two years. So I'm now struggling with that. So what kind of example we can develop in order to bring a general audience uh, in order to reconnect them <coughs> to the agrobiodiversity? It's really challenging. So what I'm doing now, in Cuba, if you are not able to see me around, it's because I'm doing that. In Cuba, I'm connecting small farmers, research and seed market in two places. One place is a very low income zone. Um, in the second is uh, the very high income zone. I really need to learn. I need to understand how it's going on. I'm involved in the process, like a broker, co-broker. There is a local broker or a couple of bro local brokers I'm with them, learning together how to connect people and to see how the connection and this kind of function of the system can be sustained. In Spain, we identify IMIDA. IMIDA is the Agri-Food Research Institute of Murcia. And there, farmers and market are able to promote local seed variety in two zones. With IMIDA, we are we are working in this area. In the municipality of Aguila, they are really terrible chemical applier. <laughs> it's very conventional. You cannot imagine that. It's the tomato that we are consuming here, many of tomatoes, they export to all over the Europe, but they are terrible chemical oriented. But they know how to make business. On the other side, we met this really very interesting agroecological network. They are doing very interesting job, but they don't know how to make businesses. So we try to run two case studies in order to, to see how we can connect each other. Because the, ideally, it can be interesting that they know how to make business model in such a way that they can get a little bit more space in the peri-urban area of, of Murcia that traditional, traditionally in the past they were able to grow a lot of vegetables. On, at the same time we are quite interested to contaminate them with our ecological practices. It's ideally I'm thinking. This is my hypothesis. Reality always beyond that. In the United Kingdom, for me, it's, uh, the most big challenge that I have. It's not my culture, it's not my language. It's really cold. But anyway, so we are in principle organizing the diversity exhibition of hot chili pepper and tomatoes and see the reaction of the, of the conventional and alternative market player, consumer and farmer. There are plenty of diversity here, for instance, Organic Garden. Sarah Burby have an amazing collection of hot chili paper. I, I would try to grow this diversity and to put the, this diversity in the market to invite some of you. 
um, to see what is the reaction that the market people have. I went to the market, I discussed with a market officer there, and he said, oh, it's, it's interesting. I tried to negotiate price for this three-day uh, event, and he said, no, 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 it's for free. Said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, it's an event, it's not commercial activity, but it's, it's a way that we really want to, to, to measure in the field what is reaction. Because uh, I have my hypothesis that you never can ask something that you never tried. And in many countries that I have been working with, the consumer, mainly the youth, are not able to ask something different because they don't know. They never tried that. Because all this knowledge are being completely eroded. It's how to reconnect them again with different flavor, taste, it, something different. And to see what kind of business can be created in, in, in which a win-win situation can be attained as well. So I will organize action learning program here at um, Murcia University, Havana. And finally, um, it's a, a performance. I'm, I'm planning to organize at the end a performance to reconnect, to reconnect people with uh, this agro-biodiversity value. Yeah. Uh, so the, the I don't know for you, but for me, the art is powerful, a powerful tool to convince people. I have many experience in Latin American countries how the artists have been able even to transform uh, the, the societies through the music and other things. So why we cannot involve the art into the, the, the big transformation that the, we really need to achieve? So art is very important. I try to to involve artists on that, uh, but we'll would be at the end. Now I'm focused now on the, on the first phase. But anyway, we are in Christmas time, and this kind of uh, inclusiveness, inclusiveness approach, I wrote a song. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, very complex. I, 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 I create this word. It's uh, for the Spanish speaker. In inclusivo, inclu, encrucijada. It's a mess up bet between including and cross. It's a little bit crazy. Incluyete, incluyela, incluyeme, tra la la la. Si yo me incluyo con ella, si tú te incluyes conmigo, Chorizos con lentejas y frijoles con comino. Y si tú eres vegana y tú te incluyes con ella, no faltarán berenjena ni hierbita en Nochebuena. Incluyete, incluyela, incluyeme. Tra la la la. Thank you.